Hey guys, and welcome to Leona, Pennsylvania. I'm Large H. Mappin, and uh, well, today we're doing something a little bit different. I went to the local dealer um, in town and uh, picked up a demo unit that I had uh, had brought out. Uh, I got in contact with a uh, local, I guess, I believe they're actually Canadian, but they're somewhat local to us here in Pennsylvania. Um, by the, uh, I believe they're called the Anderson Group. This is an Anderson like TSR 3450 um, bale stacker is the best way to put it. And um, it's just a demo unit, uh, nothing special. I had, I've wanted to try one of these out for a long time. I thought they would be good, a good replacement for a uh, four hour PJ trailer, more than anything. Um, I've been looking at different uh, ways to work with bales and handle bales. Um, I just, I'm not happy with the current methods that are out there. Yeah, I'm going to leave that, if you want to, I'm going to leave that bale there. That is just a grass bale. I'll deal with that later. Um, yeah, there's not much I can, not much we can do in regards to bale solutions and bale handling around here. I'm kind of getting tired of using a 24-foot uh, trailer with my truck, and I've been looking at a different solution. Um, we have a tail handler. We could upgrade to... Uh, bale trailers that are pulled behind tractors and do like a tandem setup but the way our roads are and how narrow they are I, I worry that that is not a not a great solution to a problem whereas this here um, this is just one single trailer and it stacks twice twice high and it removed the fuel usage of a of say a skid steer or a telehandler that's the big thing for me is it removes that that extra machine from the uh, from the equation saves on fuel saves on just about everything and this is running off I believe the three SCVs right there oh no there we go so there, there's no real method to my madness here of how I'm going to go about picking this up. Um, best thing I can say is just kind of pick whichever one stands out and go with it. So silage, I know some of you are probably going to be wondering what happened to silage. And maybe you thought that the next episode would be us chopping. And I had originally thought about that as well, but I got a little bit busy and um, kind of set to work on doing a couple different things. and kind of ended up here. Um, I produced about 109 bales worth of hay, which is quite a bit for us. It's for the amount of land we currently have. And I still have a couple more fields that I may chop in the future, depending on how side season goes. But they're not, they're not in the best shape for what they are. Um, we've had kind of a dry year. We're lucky to get what we have off of off of the fields and yeah I uh, I am I'm definitely a little bit worried about our uh, our stock right now um, I think we produced a little over half a million liters of silage which is roughly enough to get us by for about hopefully two or three months I'm not too sure how long exactly um, I know I know it should last us a good little while, but we've got quite a few animals to take care of us here, and the year we're having, I am, it is a concern, for sure. Um, I wish I could have brought you guys along and showed you the new tractor that we picked up. Um, that was actually our uh, packing tractor, and that, that did really well. Uh, we put a 14-foot uh, pickle blade on it, and one of our old concrete weights, and that tractor did really well. Um, really nice machine. It's um, more so, I expect it more so to be a, uh, a a tank tractor, you know, put it on one of our Kia tanks and kind of run that operation more so than I did um, to have it as a as a main tillage tractor. Uh, it may go on tillage at some point, but really what I wanted that tractor for was for the location. I wanted that to 
kind of be a Packy Jack Grim. And for the manure handling processes that we deal with here, we go full. So this is the, uh, the unit we picked up just as a demo. Um, stack's too high, the trip stack, I mean, right maybe about seven long. So not quite as big as I thought it would be. But it's better than the alternative for sure. Drawing it. Shut that door. There we go. Let the track down. So, other than that, guys, we'll be getting into Harvester soon. Corn silage, I will definitely be bringing you guys all along for that. Um, we've got quite a bit to do there. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. And then, we also have just, uh, we have soybean harvest. That's coming up. Uh, that was something new we tried for the year. Um, not something we usually do here. Soybeans are kind of a, just a breakup for us more than anything, they, they kind of break up our rotation, kind of a, a third crop that we can plant. So wheat and wheat, a little bit of oats and corn are really our main focus. The two uh, grains for their straw and then corn for its, uh, its value, feed value. We'll go, we'll go this way here. So I'm going to be trying to fill up the bank barn here. Um, I'm not going to worry about putting it, putting these bales into the bank barn just yet. But we will definitely dump them here. So I believe... Let's back this up and we'll kind of form a line here. that arm, yeah, that arm's good. And then we just kind of tilt the deck up and let it slide out from the trailer. There we go. And that comes back down. And that arm should hopefully put back up. Yep. It's really just a nice, easy process of uh, unloading, and then we can take right back off. Which I'm hoping to store hopefully 40 ish bales. They look good to go, yeah. 40 ish bales there um, in the barn, and then I'm thinking of putting about 20 or 30 in our commodity shed over there as uh, not as loose hay, but just uh, standard, kind of leave them whole. Um, usually we shred a lot here. Um, I'm thinking this year we ended up upgrading mixers to an Anderson mixer, which uh, which has the capability to shred bales, um, so long as there's no twine in the feed, of course. But usually they'll shred bales pretty good, so I'll likely go ahead and just put them in whole. It may take a little bit longer for them to mix, but overall, I think that'll just speed up our speed up our process a whole lot more. And I'll likely be selling off our hay buster and just going to a likely a Coon or an Anderson bale shredder, which will be for just bedding. Um, since I no longer need to shred the bales, I can just use the mixer itself to do that. So I'd rather just go down to a blower and uh, get rid of the the actual kind of shredder. It would be definitely a big change for us, but I think it would speed up a lot of what we do here. But yeah, working on the hills here, I definitely a pretty view. Um, Leona and its valley is so pretty up here. Being able to look down and see the farm and also the hills surrounding it. Uh, yeah, we're, we're looking at a couple of things. I, I guess one thing I've forgotten to mention is that I did take up a demo of a set of Claws um, triple mowers. 
class, class. I think it's class, but you know, some people say class, but um, yeah, we, we picked up a set of them, and I have quite a bit of those those machines. Um, they were hooked on to our new tractor. Um, they're a little big for that tractor, admittedly. Uh, overall, they handled fairly well. I think I can get away with it in the hills. Uh, my biggest concern is the what's going up the uh, the headlands where I'm going against the hill. Um, it brought the machine down to about five or six miles an hour, which isn't terrible for sure, but it's not great either. There we go. Move up here. Come on now. This tractor is a little bit small. To be handling this uh, this machine. Definitely do use one of the uh, magnums, but I believe, well, I uh, think about it, the uh, 8000 series magnum isn't on anything. That probably would be the better machine to use it on. But generally, that's on the merger. Um, so, this tractor is the only machine that's really available. Uh, I did put it on the baler this, this time around, but I went ahead and took it off the baler. We hooked it up to this. I felt I just I just felt that this machine would be a little bit better in bail handling for sure. A little bit more nimble, um, shorter frame. That's really a, that was a big concern was a nice turning radius considering you're you're dragging around such a big uh, piece of equipment and especially with bales you've got to be a little bit more nimble. I believe we are full. Yeah? There we go. So we'll come back and pick up those two right there. And then we'll move on to the fields up above. But, other than that, uh, I'm looking forward to harvest and Looking forward to hopefully bringing you guys along for feeding. That'll be a interesting uh, task. That'll be a, a nighttime or kind of an early morning video, which I'm not sure how you guys will like that, but I do enjoy the uh, the early morning kind of feeding and getting the cows ready for the day. Um, I don't do a lot of the milking. I won't be able to show you show you guys a lot of the parlor work. Um, I'm more so just managing the equipment along with a couple other seasonal guys. It's mainly me. I me here doing the equipment work though. Um, I'll likely bring in a truck driver when we're uh, when we're doing the corn silage and stuff like that. But other than that, generally it's just me. I bring in a couple guys for tillage work and a little bit for grass work. Um, I was hoping to bring in someone to run baler behind me in the merger, but that just didn't happen, unfortunately. But I have hopes that I can hopefully convince someone to come in and help with that. And another another thing I considered is if I fill the uh, bank barn and the commodity shed, I will likely some of those bales in that pit there, since that one is not not used as much as it used to be. What are you stopping there for, dude? I think he was a little concerned for the uh, the outer rims on this tractor. He didn't want to hit them, but kind of stopped in the middle of the driveway there. I want to get out and see. Let's uh, back right now. I want to get out and see how close I can get to these here. Oh, so we come straight back. Uh, line the arm there up to this here. I think we should be good. Right about there. Okay, there should be good. Uh, 
Let me straighten up your guys. A little hard to see back there. Okay, there it is. So we want to do something like that. Just slowly slide the track forward. There we go. Bring that, that top back down. And I'll likely have to go around the farm here. I don't think I can make that turn there. So uh, while we're running around here, I will go ahead and explain a little bit about the farm here. So this here is just one of our heifer barns. Um, the old tie stall here is currently uh, non-operational. I still use one of the silos there. I have most of corn though. Um, that's a uh, storage barn there, mainly for our tr uh, longer trucks, and I keep a couple other things in there. Um, this is our young calf pen, um, kind of bringing it up from about four months old, I want to say, up to about that year mark, and then we kind of transition, transition them over to this pen over here, and then from there, um, they kind of get mixed in with the uh, milking age cows, and get moved into our large freestyle. And then in the freestyle we have four pens. Um, the first three are milking pens, and we have a fourth pen that are what I would more so consider our special needs and calving pen where we separate them off. That's about it. Uh, quite a bit of work. But that layout usually works for us. Um, not perfectly for sure, but I do prefer that way and that method. And well guys, I think I might end up um, going ahead and doing a time-lapse here. Um, and me collecting the rest of the bales. Got quite a bit more work to do. And I think it would be better done in a time-lapse time -lapse format than it is in a video format. Yeah, I think I've, I've covered everything. Um, if you have any questions about what we're doing here, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, yeah.
probably bring you back right before I ended off the episode here. Um, just thought we'd check in real quick before the end. Um, not a whole lot more going on here. Um, got another field to do. And that's about it. Um, I want to go ahead and say thank you for 1.1 subs on YouTube. I was not expecting to gain about 150 subs so quickly. Um, Thanks guys for subbing, um, if you aren't currently subscribed, feel free to do so, and uh, don't forget to like the episode here, I um, greatly appreciate the support, and I read every comment, I haven't quite responded to every comment, I, uh, I don't quite have the words for every comment, but I always respond, I try and answer the ones that I think are really important and need to be responded to, um, as far as the status of the map, I don't know, I really do not know. Um, I have quite a few people asking when will this map come out, when will I be able to play on this map. I don't know currently. I really do not. Uh, me and Squatch have talked about it uh, recently and we've kind of decided we, we don't know ourselves. We, we've got a couple things to fix and a couple things I've got to redo and figure out. Uh, I hope before Christmas. Um, that's the plan. I'm a little busy with college and just getting this episode together has been a little bit of a challenge. So I don't, I don't really know. I'll, I'll definitely try and get it out here soon. I can't promise anything. I wanna, I wanna get it out. Wanna get it released. But the map's not quite in the state where I think I can release, release it to the public um, without there being game-breaking issues and things where the entire, your entire save could be destroyed. Um, it's really my concern at the moment. It's just takes a couple things that I have to fix. Um, with terrain, if I, I were to change terrain, that would be a be an issue of needing a new safe game. It's not completely game breaking, but it is most definitely a concern. Uh, other than that, there's just a few other things that I am concerned about to where I you could need a new save if I were to add another building like I, I thought about doing and uh, I thought about working on these bunkers here and getting them perfect. They're not, they're not perfect at the moment because of the nature of how they're placed. Um, they just they can't be. So I, I'm debating on it, trying to figure that out. And I'll let you guys know. Um, you'll definitely hear if I release it. Uh, for those who don't know, Hannah, Indiana, the other map, that is released. You guys can go download that anytime you want. Um, that was released, that was released, oh, got to be at least two weeks ago now. Um, I've been in school at least a week now, so, yeah, definitely go give that a look. That, that is out there. Um, uh, there should be two zip files on my itch page. Um, Facebook page is in the description. It's also on my channel there on the banner. Um, you'll see my other, other links there. Other than that, um, I thought about making an Instagram page for screenshots and things like that. If you guys are interested in me posting screenshots and all that I do, um, I know the Dis Tyson Denez's Discord, um, Denez Mods, I think is what we've called that. I don't remember. Or Denez in Edits and Mods? I don't know. I don't have to ask Tyson. But um, you can find me there. That's where a lot of my other stuff is screenshots and you can ask me questions there. That's a lot better than YouTube or even Facebook. I don't really, I don't always look at Facebook either. So if you want to get in contact with me, um, my Discord is probably the best place to go. And that'll be on Denez Mods or whatever, uh, Tyson Pulse's Discord channel. So feel free to ask him there. Other than that, thanks guys for watching. Um, hope to bring more content at least maybe once a week. Um, one video a week is about all I can promise with college currently. I'm a senior, and it's just kind of eating up my time. I'm currently applying to law school as well. I just don't have the time I used to um, during the summer. I was very lucky to have the time I did. So, Other than that, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. Um, thanks for all the support, guys.